Hey y'all, welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I'll be talking about how you can get your child back after losing them to DCFS. Um, I don't know the numbers, but I know there's thousands and thousands of children that are taken yearly from their parents by DCFS for whatever reason, whether it was a general cause or not, um, or it was done unjustly, whatever it is. So um, I have personally dealt with that and I decided to not give my personal experience, but just a, a general experience, how you can get your child, child back to help those parents that don't know what to do, that is going through this currently, or just feel hopeless. So first, want to know that you have to strengthen your mind and your emotions. When this happens, all we feel is like giving up, like, oh my goodness, I can't believe my child is taken. You feel like giving up, you want to die, whatever, whatever emotion you're feeling. But after you feel those emotions, you get it all out, you cry it all out, I want you to know that you then have to go into fight mode. Mommy fight mode, daddy mode, whatever, and then start building up your, um, your mind. So no, think positive. I am going to get my child back. I'm going to do what I have to do. Um, I'm going to have my emotions together. You don't want to be crying all over the place in front of the workers and judge and things like that. You want to show that you're stable mentally in a way, if that makes sense. You want to make sure that you're meditating, that you're praying, you're eating right, you're exercising. You're just doing the best that you can to help your mind, your body, and your soul. Because dealing with that can take a lot from a person and it and it varies from person to person some people can deal with it some people can't cope with it some people lose their mind some people just give up don't even go after the child because it's like it's too much for them so when it becomes too much i just want you to know that you can youtube some stuff how to um strengthen your mind or just youtube meditation music pray to the god you pray to listen to some jazz you just want to tell yourself you're going to get through this Look in the mirror every day. I am blank, say your name, and I'm going to get through this. I am a good parent. I am a good parent. Parent, Whether it's true or not, speak it into existence. I am a good parent. I will get my child back. I can make it through this. Whatever it is, you want to do that. You want to know your right, and you want to, you want to know your rights, and you want to know the law. You want to know your rights as far as when they take your child, you have visitation rights. Whether it's monitored or not, you have the right to see your child. You have the right to know where your child is placed. You don't need to know the address, and they can't give that away, but you have the hey, so-and-so have been placed already. We'll contact you when you have your visitations. You want to know that you, just because the worker is telling you something doesn't mean it's always true. They may try to say whatever they can just to screw you over more or just to see how far they can just mess with you how far they can go without you questioning okay well can you show me you want to make sure you like okay if they saying okay you can't see your child until you um do parenting classes okay say thank you i'm going to start my parenting classes my domestic violence class, whatever but can you show me in your handout or in your your policies where it said i can't see my child until that you just want to ask every question and do it respectfully whether you know it's right or not you just want to make sure that worker is not abusing their power making sure that they are doing their job to help assist you so that you can do what you need to do to get your child back. So know, and then know the law. Okay, like if they messing up and they not treating you right, know that you can sue them. You can go against them because a lot of workers, they do, these social workers, they do a lot of stuff and it's not right, but because people are afraid of them and they feel like, oh, that I can win against them, they don't say nothing. So if you don't know the law right now, start looking up your amendments and just learning the process of how to go about getting a new worker. If you need to get a new worker, report stuff to their supervisor, write down the stuff that, that's going on that you don't like and report it. You want to do everything on your end to show like, hey, I, have made, I may have gotten my child taken away, but I'm a responsible parent and, I, and I, I want my child back and I'm going to do X, Y, and Z to get my child back. You, while you're doing this, you want to show that you are complying, complying with them, which means that you're not being nasty. You're not trying to be difficult. Um, if someone consider you questioning what's going on, are you asking to see proof difficult, then that's a problem that they have and they need to rethink their, their field of work. But you want to comply. If they tell me, hey, your child was taken because you're in domestic violence, I need you to take these domestic violence classes. Just say, okay, I'm on it. Give them all the proof. 
I start on Wednesday. It's for two hours a day. The program is six weeks, whatever it is. Do what you have to do. If it's AA, what do they call it? AA classes? If it's um, drug and alcohol abuse classes counseling, do that. Parenting counseling, do that. Whatever it is you need to do. Customers, um, community service. You want to do it all to show. Even if, even if you don't have to do domestic violence or whatever, I kind of recommend you doing all that just to show, hey, judge, hey, worker. I even I took the parenting classes. I took the domestic violence classes. I took um, substance, abuse cla uh, sus substance abuse classes and, and whatever else they offer just to show, look, I'm, I've done above and beyond what y'all said. I'm really serious about getting my child back or my children back. You want to do that. Your child can be taken for many reasons. Um, you probably didn't have a place. They got called out and they realized you don't have your own place to stay. Domestic violence abuse. You abused your child. Whatever it is. But in the midst of your child being gone, this is your time to have some me time and to grow. As a parent, as an individual, where, whether you're male or female, and do what you have to do to get your life in order. You want to make sure, okay, you're taking those classes. You're still being healthy mentally, physically, and spiritually. And if you don't have a place to stay, you're getting employment, if that's what you need, and you're finding a stable place to stay. Because most of the times, they won't give your child back if you don't have a place to stay. And I think they prefer it to be your own. So make sure you're working on your credit, whatever you have to do to have a place for your children to stay. That's kind of like, that's like number two after your um, taking those classes that they need. They want to see that you're stable, this child, and it's not, I don't even think they care so much about the job part, because when I didn't dealt with them, they didn't really mention too much about, you know, are you working or not? It was just so much, okay, you, do you have a place for your child? A safe place. You don't want to recommend a place and it's smelling like weed or trifling people there and all that. You don't want that. You want to get a place where you know it's safe and that when they come and inspect, because they will inspect that you have the lights on, there's hot water, there's gas, and that you have um, at least the basics, the bed and, you know, a bed and a refrigerator and things like that for your kids, that they have their clothes and there's food in the refrigerator. Those are the basic things that, the basics that they look for. And they shouldn't be asking to see your room as the parent. I, I guess it may depend on what state you're in, but in California, it's nobody business about what your room looks like. It, it shouldn't be. Unless there's a certain circumstance that's going on. But they should just be wanting to see where the children will be laying their heads at. And the root, look in the refrigerator, see if it's in there. And make sure your house is clean, people. I know that it's our house and we like to live how we want to live. But when you know they come, and just kind of tighten up a little bit. You ain't got to overdo it, but just tighten up. Make sure it's clean and smelling fresh. There's no mildew. There's no roaches running around. There's no, none of that. There's no company there when you go. You want to make sure everything is legit when they come and do the inspection. Um, because that when that when that happened, that mostly means that your child should be on his way back to you, and they want to make sure everything's okay. Um, through it all that you're going through, you no matter what anybody may say, you want to stand your ground. If you feel your rights are being uh, violated and you're not treated right, or you've dealt with them before, and this worker is um, treating you a little different, stand your ground. Confront the worker, excuse me, ma'am, excuse me, sir, I understand you've been doing this for a long time. I have dealt with DCF, DCFS before, and I feel you treat me a little different. I feel that, you know, you're not giving me all the resources. There's resources they can help you with. Gas card, depending on your your county, they can help you with clothes vouchers. They can help you with um, food banks. There's different things. Housing, they can give you leads to that. It just depends on your worker and the, the county that you're in. But just stand your ground. I don't care if everybody gets you. If you know you're not being treated right or they, they're saying words to offend you or making you seem less than, let them know, hey, I don't like it. Can you please stop that? I don't like it. And if you don't stop, I will report this. And you write, jot all that stuff down. You want proof. So my worker came today at 345 and they had a nasty attitude. They accused me of whatever. They were looking at me certain ways. You want to have all that proof and stand your ground no matter what. Because if you don't believe in yourself, nobody else will. And then you'll just steady kind of be losing yourself to the system, letting them get away with things that they shouldn't be getting away with. While you're standing your ground, you want to be respectful. 
<laughs> I'm not going to share my personal experience right now just yet, but it's times I had to respectfully tell somebody off and without cussing, but sternly tell them, hey, no, we're not going to do that over here. We're not. And it's okay if you have that right of freedom of speech, whether you cuss or not, but you do have that right. But I recommend that you don't cuss because that worker kind of is sad, but they, they have to say or not if your child come home or not. It ain't even really up to the judge. It's whatever the worker is telling the judge or whatever the worker put in that um, the court order. So you want to make sure that you are respectful and you can respectfully say, hey, I don't like this. Or you told me I can see my child this week and I have a son. I haven't seen them. And I need you to do better by that. I need to at least video call my child. I need to have some type of communication with my child. Or I need an update on my case. Don't let these people, just because they walk around with a badge and they take your kid, take, take all your power from you. No, nah, we're not doing that. Especially if I'm, especially if you're black, black community, we got to come together. Know that you're strong and that you can fight against them respectfully while standing your ground. Don't be letting people get over you, walk all over you. We're not having that. I mentioned this a little bit, but you want to take all the classes that you that you want, that you can, whether you're recommended or not. Get those certificates. Go every day. Get those um, progress reports. Participate in class. And when you go to these classes, learn what you can. If you don't, if it don't apply to you, you don't like it, don't take it, but take what you need. If they're telling you how to be more patient and, and just be open-minded or if different ways to punish your child or whatever is going on, just, just take, be open-minded and respect everyone's opinion and know that everyone is there and they shouldn't be judging you and that this is just a learning process. I feel bad as a parent, as a dad, whatever, or as the guardian that you're in this situation. Situations happen for a reason. You take it, you learn from it, and you improve. You do better so that way you don't have to get back in the situation again. That's what these classes are about, to help us better ourselves. And I must tell you, there is nothing wrong with taking parenting classes. Even domestic violence classes, because it shows you the signs and what to look for and to avoid. It shows you how to better. It was so many times I took parenting classes voluntarily and sometimes for court, and I took it many different times, and each time I learned something different. Those, some of those parents have good advice. Some of them, I'm just like, oh, I, I'm not doing that. But the ones that I like, I took that. And I learned from it and I applied it the best that I could to my ability. So you want to do that. While you're going through this difficult time, I know sometimes you may want to give up. You're like, forget it. But you want to show up. You want to show up to every court day, every CFT meeting, whatever type of meeting they want to have. You want to show up. And if you can't show up, at least 24 hours in advance, say, hey, I can't make it. But can we do a conference call. There's a lot of times I have to do a call, do the meeting over a call or video call, whatever you want to show that you're being active and that you're communicating with them like, hey, I can't do this, but can we do this instead or can we reschedule? And you for sure want to show up to those court dates because it's like you're not showing up, you're being a responsible parent, responsible guardian, and the chance of you getting your child back that day, it has been delayed. You know, so you want to just do everything on your end. When you show up to court, show up at least 15, 30 minutes, even an hour ahead of time. And dress professionally. This is not the time to be coming in with scarves around your head or pants sagging or smelling like just stuff. You want to come in there clean, groomed to the best of your ability, and you want to come in there being respectful. You want to show the judge that you know what you're talking about. You're not one of those parents that don't know what's going on because sometimes they feed off of that. They know you don't know. You don't, you don't want to go in there looking frightened. Even though you may feel it deep down inside, go in there with your gang face on. Yes, yes, okay, yes, your honor. Well, this is what's going on. I don't like that. And you can talk in court. Although they don't like you to talk, excuse me, your honor, may I add this? Because you get lawyers that don't even do their job or they're trying to hush you up to keep the case going longer. And I had to, it's been a time I have to say, excuse me, your honor, um, can I get this day because this works best? I'm in school, blah, blah, blah. And if you're in school, say things like that. That let the judge know, okay, this person is adamant, they're committed to something, and they have a goal. Because this a few times I've been, excuse me, your honor, can we, excuse, um, can we move that court date to a Friday because I'm in school, and Monday through Thursday I'm in school, and you know I got to get time. And they honor that, and they see that. Even to this day, I'm still going through a, a case right now, but they see that. They see like, okay, this person, well, you go where? Yeah, I go here, I'm studying this and that, and I do all my parenting classes. You want to show that you're being proactive and that you're bettering yourself daily. And always remember, this is just a situation. 
This will this can only last as long as you want it to last. The more effort you put it in, the more the sooner that you get your child or your children back. The less effort you put in, you're not showing up the court, you just giving up. And I know it's kind of hard, but at that moment, whatever's going around you in your life, it may be difficult. You may have lost a loved one, but if getting your child back, getting your child back is important. You gotta have that number one priority. Explain to the worker what's going on. I'm not doing my best right now because this happened. My family's going through a lot, but I am going to show up to court. But I just want you to know in advance, if I'm feeling this way or I'm, I'm feeling like I'm, I'm just not being as active, this is why. Communication is key. You will always communicate what is going on. And don't tell them too much. Don't tell them things that they don't need to know. If they're asking, then you, you reply. Don't give them any additional information. It can be used against you, especially a person of color. Uh-uh. They ask, you tell, you be mindful of what you want to tell them, but don't let them um, fear you. Don't let them put fear in you. Don't let them scare you, none of that. Okay? If anything, you put fear in them in a respectful way. Like, if you don't do your job, know that I'm that parent that's going to make sure you do your job or I'm going to get, I'm going to get a new um, worker. I'm going to report this to your supervisor. You want to do things like that. While you're going to court and you're having to deal with all paperwork, you want to make sure you keep every copy. If you're giving your worker something, make a copy of that, put down on that date the day you gave it to that worker and give the worker something because you don't want to not have your proof, your backup. Oh, I didn't get this or no um, worker. I made a copy and I put today's day, July 13th, and I gave it to you. And oh, okay, well, I didn't rely on me. You want to have all your proof. You want to have phone records, text message records, um, whatever they're giving you. If they actually do something, oh, please, oh my goodness, please. Please read everything that you are signing. Do not trust these, I almost call them evil animals. And that's what they are. Don't trust this system. You want to read each line. And if you don't, if you don't, and you, you have a learning disability or you want to take your time and reassess, hey, can I take this back so I can thoroughly read it through and research what I can and bring it back to you and sign? And they, you don't have to sign anything right then and there. You should be able to say, yes, I can, because I've done that a few times. Um, well, let me take this home so I can review it. And, and yes. And I get it back to them the next day. You don't have to do anything in a rush that someone's telling you. You're not a puppet. You're a human. And you want to research it. If there's a word that you say you don't know what it is, go on Google, go on YouTube, and research that. Don't just be signing because they say sign. This time I took 10, 5 minutes just to read. Probably not 10, but I took 5 minutes to read that whole thing. Reread it again. Okay, I'm reading each line. I don't care what you're telling me this is. I need to know for myself. Because a lot of times we get caught up in not knowing we didn't sign something. We probably didn't sign our rights away or say that we're not going to do something. And we didn't know that that was in there. So you want to read everything. You want to make sure that your story is consistent. That you're honest. That it's the same. If, if whatever you got them taking, it ain't, oh, well, this happened. And then now you got a new story. And then it, you mix it up. You don't want to seem like you're unworthy of the truth. That they can't trust you. You want to stick to your story. Make sure it's what it is and roll with it. Whatever happened, that's between you and your family, but you want to, whatever you say, make sure that that is consistent. Because you don't want to seem as a liar or unstable or just don't know what's going on and you just say whatever you can to get your child back because that's not going to really help the situation. Please be honest or if you're going to say something, make sure you're, you're going to keep repeating that same story. Don't have a new story. This is a, a big one. You want to make sure that you, the foster family, and the worker are on the same page. The lawyers, that you guys are on the same page because you may be told one thing, oh, your children are going to come back by the worker, but you get there, the lawyer's like, well, no, this got to be done. And the foster mother may think, and you just want to make sure everyone's on the same accord. Hey, call the worker. Hey, so this is what's going on, right? You did say if I update or do my parenting classes, that I can have um, monitor visits, right? Oh, f contact the foster family. Hey, well, I just talked to the worker just so that everyone kind of knows that if some girl won't be like, well, I did hear that. She did contact me. He did contact me and say this and that. You want as much proof as possible because we already know the system is messed up. And you just want to make sure that you have everything in order, that you're organized, that you're responsible. And that way, when something happens, there's proof, just overall proof. And so just to wrap up everything, I'm sorry if anyone is going through that. You can totally reach out to me. I've been going through 
DCFS for two years now or two and a half years and I got a case open and it was unjust there was no reason for that lady to open a case up on me but she did anyway and I've been dealing with it and so I'm not just speaking just to be speaking I'm speaking from experience and I'm a mother that is still going through it right now and everything that I told y'all I best believe I did it because they had they had had the wrong parent <laughs> the wrong parent Okay, I'm not the one. I'm. You're going to have to show me what's going on. And through it all, you want to keep yourself mentally prepared and happy. Even though the worker may be saying they may come home, just kind of hope for the best. But just know that, okay, this may not happen. That way you don't get your hopes up too high and then your kids don't come home. You want to be just mentally prepared. Just know that as long as you do everything on your end and you stay adamant about it and you be hard on them workers, you will get your child back. And take this time and use it wisely. Start a business. That's my favorite thing to tell y'all. Okay, you don't got your kids. Let's go back to school. Let's start a business. Let's start getting more healthier. Let's be more organized, clean the house. Whatever you need to do to be proactive because everything happens for a reason. So if your child got taken out, I'm so, so sorry. But do what you can to better yourself because we can always still be better parents. So take this time to take that break. It may not be the break that you wanted. But just try to look at the best because when I was going through, I'm still going through it. I was just like, I can't believe I'm going through this. I mean, and I know some horrible parents and I'm like, me? <laughs> Are you kidding me? <laughs> but you just want to be in a happy space. You want to do whatever you can to keep your mental stable. Oh my, because mental illness is real. And you want to make sure that you're not thinking any thoughts. If you think any thoughts, reach out to someone. You're not crazy. People... Emotions happen. They're up and down. And you want to make sure you, if you need to take therapy, take that therapy. If you need to get out and do yoga, enjoy the nature, get a break, go ahead and do that. Because you, even if you got your child back and you're not right mentally or whatever, the cycle may happen again. You may get your child taken because you didn't fail to do something or you're neglecting them. So take this time wisely to better yourself. Do what you got to do that when we get your children back, everything's in order. Even come up with a schedule when they come back. Like, hey, now we're going to, mommy's trying to better herself. So we're going to be more organized. We're going to have a schedule. We're going to even have family day. We're going to have family talks. We're sure child, you can become a better parent. Don't let this situation put you down. No, use it to your advantage. This may even want to inspire you to become a lawyer like it did me. Or to become a worker. Or to just be a parent partner to someone that's going through something. So everything's happened for a reason. You can either handle it in a good way or a bad way, and I urge you to handle it in a good way. You will get through this, be proactive, let your kids know every day, hey, if someone touching you, whatever, doing whatever you're not, they're not supposed to report that. Don't constantly let your children know, because stuff happens in homes when they're not in our care, okay? Um, I wish you guys all the luck, and this is advice that I actually use. I can go in more detail. I'll do that in another video. But we're going to get in song of the day and stay encouraged, okay? Y'all got this. Reach out to me. Leave it in the comments, whatever. And I'll personally contact you guys to just, whether it's a motivational speech or you need advice or more detail how I was able to stand my ground or whatever. I allow them not to take my other two kids because they tried to, but they didn't because I'm not the one. And you're not about to do that without a cause, you know? But whatever it is, contact me. I'm not, I am non-judgmental and I'm here to help. So it's time for some good of the day.